This video gives you the scary truth about the C's in 2022's NBA playoffs. When guarded by Jason Tatum, Kevin Durant's been held to 10 points, 10 turnovers, and he's made only two baskets in three games. Peyton Pritchard's averaging 7.7 .7 points per night on 89% true shooting in this series in just 12 minutes on average. Ime Udoka only gave the Time Lord Robert Williams 16 minutes off the pine in his return, but the Celtics' typical starting center was tied with Derek White for Game 3's second highest plus minus, as RW3 was a plus 5. The NBA's most deadly second scoring option in Jalen Brown's 6.3 made field goals per game within 5 feet isn't merely the best of anyone in the Brooklyn series, it's the third highest mark in the entire NBA playoffs, trailing only Giannis and Jimmy Butler. It wasn't too long ago that Boston was given a 4% chance by ESPN to earn a top 6 seed, so you're about to see how this special team from Beantown continues to prove every doubter dead wrong. Right before that, just 10% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss a single upload. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and it makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at DFlowHoops and I'll follow you back. Link is down below in the description for those two platforms. Whether it's crowding KD in the pick and roll with switchable big men like Daniel Tice, denying Durant the ball as he maneuvers off down screens, trapping to force the ball out of his hands, or Jason Tatum, Marcus Smart, and Jalen Brown's aggressive, yet fundamentally sound one-on-one -on -one defense, Boston has sent the Nets' best player to Alcatraz. 2022's Eastern Conference quarterfinals have seen the four-time scoring champion fail to provide like a number one option. Durant's been held to just 19 field goals and has committed 17 turnovers. For that, you can give credit to the man who ranked number one among all small forwards this year in defensive rating. Jason Tatum's taken on and more than excelled at the challenge of guarding and scoring against one of his idols growing up. You may or may not know this, but back in 2014, high school sophomores Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown attended the Kevin Durant Skills Academy. The Jays have now gone full circle, morphing from KD students to his toughest rivals in the association. Before Game 3, through the first two games of Boston against Brooklyn, Tatum guarded 168 possessions and held opponents to 16 points on 8 for 25 shooting from the field, forcing 10 turnovers, blocking 3 shots, two of which were specifically on KD, simultaneously averaging 25, 5, and 9 while shooting 100% in the clutch. JT followed up that two-way superstar output by flying to Kings County and dropping 39, 5, 6, and 6, becoming the first Celtics player with at least 30 points 5 rebounds, 5 assists, and 5 steals in a playoff game since Dave Cowens in 1976. JT's beastly Game 3 showing in Brooklyn was also the first 35-5-5-5 playoff game by a Celtic over the last 40 years. What gets so overlooked with an abundance of NBA superstars based off their bucket-getting prowess is how valuable they are in all facets of the game, specifically defensively. Boston's top player not only has been an utter nuisance when simply clamping up his individual matchup, but Jason doesn't take a second off on this end of the floor. His attention to detail, instincts with his back-end rotations, the peskiness and activity from the man may be the most underrated of anyone in basketball. Based off his reputation as a flashy shot creator, you wouldn't expect his name to show itself in the hustle stats, but Jason Tatum's 10 deflections so far in these playoffs are good enough for 7th best among all NBA players. Averaging 29.7 points and 8 assists per game in 2022's playoffs, JT's been the C's top scorer and facilitator, equally as crucial, but sparingly brought up in your ordinary basketball conversation, are the facts that Jason's tied with Al Horford for the team lead in blocks, he's 2nd in steals per game, and the 4th most valuable Celtic on the glass. The Celtics have outscored, out-rebounded, and out-assisted the Nets during this series. Domination across the board. I'll save the contributions of a defensive catalyst in Al Horford and the DPOY Marcus Smart for future Celtics videos. Of course, there's the fluent rotations from Daniel Tice, Batman Grant Williams, among others, which have helped to make these Nets fans from a few weeks ago eat their words. Boston! We want Boston! Boston! We want Boston! 
will go into the film room on Marcus Smart's defensive impact during a Celtic video down the line. Smart's ability to hold quick backcourt players in front of him, get under their skin, and overwhelm his matchup with pressure is nothing less than one of a kind. But strictly in terms of their defense on the wing, here's a storyline that bodes extremely well for the Celtics' chances at making the finals and potentially achieving the ultimate glory this June. That's the fact that Boston's two best offensive players, and of course Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, have also been the team's two best weapons on the other end of the court at shutting down players on the perimeter. One of, if not the NBA's best duo in Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, who every member of this young Celtics team looks to when things get tense, ranked number one and number two respectively in total steals per game during these playoffs. Based off that alone, and how the C's two biggest all-around leaders are setting the tone defensively, to me, this roster has championship number 18 written all over it for Beantown. Getting back to game three, and down the stretch, Jalen Brown took advantage of Blake Griffin being on him, and the league's top number two guy shook off the former All-Star with a mix of pull-up threes and attacks off the dribble like it was nothing. Adding to an already vicious two-way system, the Time Lord Robert Williams was the lob threat and all-around versatile defensive rotator on the back end, which fans in Boston were missing in his absence. Williams tallied just one bucket and one block in Boston's Game 3 win in Brooklyn Saturday night. He'd been initially slotted for around 20 minutes in his return and finished the game with just over 15. After the game, Rob spoke on how his team encouraged him for his return, saying, The whole day, guys have been hyping me up. I'm just glad to be back out there. Al might be the happiest though, might be more happy than me, being the modest guy that he is. Robert didn't talk too much about his return, conversely voicing how impressed he was with the team while being injured. Of course, minus RW3, Boston secured the number two seed, now owning a commanding 3-0 advantage over the hyped up Brooklyn Nets. Williams touched on that success, saying, I'm extremely proud of them. I feel like we've done a great job of bouncing back from hitting adversity. We didn't do a great job of that at the beginning of this season. I'm proud of the guys, and I'm trying to add to that. Robert was spot on with that point about Boston's response to tough circumstances, considering the mainstream media tried to stir up headlines about Tatum and Brown wanting to split up midway through the season. Boston and its two rising phenoms on the wing have come a long way since those tough mid-season moments. As I've mentioned before, the Celtics had the best second half of the season of all time, for a team that was under 500 prior to it. Contributing to that, backup point guard out of Oregon and Peyton Pritchard has been the perfect speedy guard off the dribble to bail the Celtics out at the end of the shot clock. Since February 10th, when Schroeder was dealt to the Houston Rockets, Pritchard shot 45.5% from three. Pritchard's a bucket from anywhere on the floor, and against the Brooklyn Nets in game two, he showed out. He got just over 15 minutes of playing time, but he dropped 10 points on 5 for 7 shooting. Here's what Coach Ime Udoka said at regarding Pritchard. Quote, He's obviously one of our best shooters, but the trick for him was to learn to play off the ball more and understand that we have Marcus, Derek, Jason, and Jalen that can all handle and create shots for him. At times, he's a great screener and popper. He mixes it up, and we bring some smaller matchups into it, but he's done a great job of not just handling it, but playing off the ball. Two shoutouts next video, but how does Boston continue to dominate like they have been? Appreciate every answer. I hope you have a great one. DFlow signing off.